All right, we're looking at the wall chart and going over the blood vessels that can be seen on this wall chart. And the first thing that I want to do is start right at the vessels that are emerging from the heart and orient myself to left and right on the image. It's nice that we have the outline of the body and the bones to orient ourselves. Um, at the heart, the superior vena cava goes into the right atrium and that helps me orient this blue, large blue vessel is the superior vena cava. Here are the brachiocephalic veins that are merging into it and things are kind of a little more opaque and kind of dotted line outline when they're behind something like these vessels are behind the sternum here um, and so that's something to know about this model so if i start with the branches off of the aortic arch i see just a little tiny bit of the aortic arch um, back in the background here, remember it kind of runs behind the other vessels. Um, but this red vessel here, uh, running right alongside the brachiocephalic vein on the right side, is going to be the brachiocephalic trunk. And then the brachiocephalic trunk is going to branch to the right common carotid artery that's going up the right side of the neck here and the right subclavian artery. The second branch off of the aortic arch is the left common carotid artery, which is traveling up the left side of the neck and then kind of disappears from view. And then the third exit off of the aortic arch is the left subclavian artery running under the clavicle and you can really see that um, orientation on this view. Uh, then I can see a little tiny bit of the cervical vertebrae and I can just see that their smaller artery is traveling up inside the transverse foramina of the cervical vertebrae. This is the vertebral artery. And when that vertebral artery gets up toward the brainstem, it kind of merges toward the center um, in the front of the brain stem to the basilar artery, which I cannot see well on this chart. Also a little more challenging to find the internal and external carotid arteries as well. On the venous side of things coming from the head, this is the external jugular vein, which is quite a bit smaller in diameter than the internal. It runs superficial to sternocleidomastoid, and even though I can't see muscles, I can imagine where that muscle would be and that that would be superficial to it. Then the internal jugular vein is quite larger in diameter and is shown very thick on this model on the right side and then a little bit of it is visible on the left side as well. And then where those uh, jugular veins merge with the subclavian vein, uh, they become the brachiocephalic veins that I referred to in the beginning that form the top parts of that Y, where the bottom part of the Y is the superior vena cava going down into the right atrium of the heart. And if we focus in on the vessels that are serving the upper appendage, we'll start with the subclavian arteries. And remember, since they're not a mirror image, uh, you're responsible for knowing which side you're looking at. So this side, again, superior vena cava going into the right atrium. This is going to be the right subclavian artery. And then when it turns the corner and is running through the armpit corresponding with the ball and socket joint of the shoulder, this is the axillary artery. Same over here. And recognize that this model, the arm is twisted on the right side. Um, but running more in anatomical position on the left side. So we would tend to focus more on the vessels on the left side of this diagram. So uh, again, subclavian artery, this time we're on the left side, left subclavian artery, left axillary artery. Then that same tube is then called the brachial artery as it runs through the arm. And I'm trying to stay on the red vessel. Um, brachial artery. 
So down in the forearm, the brachial artery is going to split to the ulnar artery that runs on the pinky side, more medial, and the radial artery that runs on the thumb side, more laterally. Then on the venous side in the forearm, the medial most vein is the basilic vein. And on this wall chart, the median antibrachial vein is this one here, which comes up and merges with the basilic vein right there. On the lateral side, this is the cephalic vein. Okay, and then there's one vein that runs across from the cephalic vein to the basilic vein. This is called the median cubital vein. And then if we, if we scroll up and look at the arm, again, this is the basilic vein, which runs all the way up the medial edge of both the forearm and the arm. The cephalic vein does the same thing on the lateral side, runs up the forearm and along the lateral edge of the arm, and then kind of comes across the edge of the deltoid muscle to merge in up there. So we've got the basilic vein, running medially. We've also pick up with the brachial vein running through the arm. We kind of lost sight of the ulnar and radial veins on this chart. And then again, the cephalic vein. So the brachial vein comes in and merges with the basilic vein. And where those two merge, this is the axillary vein, which also helps me orient to where the axillary artery would be alongside it. And then the cephalic vein, which ran, runs alongside the deltoid muscle, then merges above the axillary vein. And where the cephalic vein merges with the axillary vein, it becomes the subclavian vein. And then once the subclavian vein merges with the jugular veins, it becomes the brachiocephalic vein, which runs into the superior vena cava and back into the heart.